Greetings, everyone. I'm Marvin Plackett, and today is Monday, July 27th. Uh, I already said greetings, but I'll say it again. Greetings to all residents, to all staff, and to all guests everywhere. Um, we continue to have four active cases of COVID-19. The one resident resides at uh, King's Crossing, and the three staff, of course, they are at home um, and uh, recovering. So. Uh, we wish them all well and hope that, that um, they recover soon and are able to all get back to normal living. Uh, as I mentioned last week, the dedicated COVID unit at Episcopal Church Home has been deactivated. We have no one on our campus that has COVID-19 and it will not be reactivated until or if we have a, another case of COVID-19 on our campus uh, where one of our current residents goes to the hospital needs a uh, temporary stay on our COVID unit uh, before they return to their home um, on our campus. <clears throat> um, just want to mention a few of the things in the newspaper today uh, but before actually I get to that um, you know just a reminder of course that the effective Saturday morning Governor Walls has put in place a uh, face mask requirement. Uh, it's an executive order, it's um, law. And um, on our campus, nothing really changed uh, because we have been requiring that for quite some time. And we all must be vigilant with that. Uh, I, this weekend, I certainly noticed the change as I went to a few different places, retail places, Tub Foods, Kowalski's, Target, a liquor store, yep, I had to stop at the liquor store as well. Uh, but when I went to those places, 100% uh, of the people were wearing their masks, and that was good to see. Because while on our campus, we're all wearing our masks indirectly, what happens out in the community, of course, ultimately invades us. Um, and COVID-19 throughout the US, it's spreading wildly. Um, there are some states, Florida has just uh, overtaken New York as having the most cases since the beginning. Uh, going back to February or early March um, and uh, it's just spreading out of control in a number of the states in the south and in the west. Um, we certainly don't want that to occur here in Minnesota and as Governor Walls has indicated you know our, our best ticket to freedom is social distancing and um, wearing a face mask. That is our best uh, fight against this virus at this time and hopefully it's not who knows how far away it is but at some point we're going to have another weapon hopefully we're going to have that vaccine but we don't have that now so our best vaccine substitute at this time is social distancing and wearing a face mask so um, so very important thank you for your vigilance <clears throat> uh, when it comes to uh, the i'm just going to read a few of the headlines protests turn ugly across the u.s um, as you know, in several cities, uh, violence um, occurred as a result of the clash of the civil unrest that goes back to the killing of George Floyd uh, in late May. Um, you know, that, that headline that I just read you, it reminds me of a quote that I uh, mentioned to you, this would have been in late May, uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. Well, we're certainly seeing that unfold throughout the nation, continuing to unfold ever since that um, horrible death of, of George Floyd. <clears throat> um, the power of the moment is a headline from today's Star Tribune. Um, and it's basically about how the church leaders in Minnesota are being called upon in new ways to play a major role in reshaping uh, the dialogue and the action steps to be taken along the lines of social justice. And of course, that's historically been the role that so many of our religious leaders have played. Uh, just to jump in the middle, quote, uh, this is now from, uh, this quote is from uh, Reverend Edwin Williams, the pastor of the most racially diverse church in the Twin Cities. Um, Quote, I get calls nearly every day from around the country and even one from Switzerland, said Williams of Sanctuary Covenant Church in North Minneapolis. They ask, what should we be doing? So um, profound things occurring in our society. 
And then, of course, over the weekend, you saw a lot of news about uh, John Lewis and the activities and ways that we are recognizing his life and his accomplishments. Um, from the Washington Post, John Lewis makes final journey across Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. <clears throat> uh, the first couple lines, 55 years ago, Alabama state troopers beat John Lewis and hundreds of protesters as they crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge. On Sunday, troopers saluted the late civil rights leader after he made his final journey across the span. What a juxtaposition. Um, beautiful. Um, and uh, as we honor a great person who accomplished great things. Okay, that is all that I have for today. I will see you, of course, tomorrow afternoon at 1.30. I look forward to that. Be well. Take care, everyone.